Hello and welcome back to the workshop. It's great to have you here because today we're going to be talking about the power hammer. I've gotten so many messages and so many comments about this power hammer. So I guess we'll jump right in to exactly how you can build this power hammer. I originally got the design for the frame from Christ Centered Ironworks. He has plans that you can buy. That's where you can build the frame from. But the design that he has for all the moving parts, I found a way that you can do it way simpler. You don't have to make a bearing, make this, make that. It's all stuff you can buy at Tractor Supply Company. Just a little tip for anyone, buy all your hardware at Tractor Supply Company because the price you pay is per pound, not per piece of hardware. So it's way cheaper. Everything that's on this is from Tractor Supply Company, basically besides the two sledgehammers there from Home Depot, but the wood, I would recommend getting all of the plans from Crash Iron Ironworks to build the frame. As soon as it gets to moving parts, don't try and build them, because it won't help you at all for the design that I've simplified this one to actually make this power hammer. I've simplified it quite a bit. So I guess we'll jump right into exactly how it works. Okay, so over here I have a 1 horsepower Harbor Freight Farm Duty motor. You want to get the Farm Duty because it's going to last a little longer than just the compressor motor. And that is what drives it. And I have a 2.5 inch keyed pulley, so there's a little keyway right in there. And then for these, it is a 5 inch pulley with a bearing in it. So this you want to be able to spin, just free spinning, so it has a bearing in there. Locked on with a piece of all thread. The way you're basically going to build this is a lot of common sense. So for measuring and stuff, if you know how to use a tape measure, you're most likely going to be able to build it. That's basically how me and my dad built it. It's just kind of a... If you have common sense and you know how to use a tape measure, you can build it. As far as this goes, this was a piece of 5160 coil spring that is about 7.95 millimeters thick. So you can probably use a piece of leaf spring. I only had coil spring at the time. So it's just bent into like a C shape. And that's what gives you the give so you can put a bigger piece of steel between the dies. And this right here is just these pull. One, two, three, four, five. We're good. This pulley, they have a hole in it. It'll work perfectly for it. You just have to open it up to three eighths, I think is what I had it. And then there's a little, you can't really see it that well. Maybe there's just a little bushing right in there. Use this from doing too much wear and on that actual threads. So make sure you have that bushing in there. Otherwise you're gonna destroy some threads and probably won't end up too well. And then up here, this was a piece of, I believe, inch and a quarter pipe that you flatten on two sides. That way you can put wedges in to hold it on there. This just half inch round bar, weld it on there, and then this is just a piece of thin bracketing that you can drill some holes and screw it in there. And that works well for holding this on, because this has to be fairly loose and has to be able to move. And so same for this. This, this is, does not have to be on there. That was for the old design that I had on it that broke every other 10 minutes. So yeah, that was a bit annoying. So just wedge it. And then this, just a little pieces of flat bar that have a hole drilled in them and are rounded over with a bolt. This needs to be able to move. Because if you look at that, that moves a lot right there. So that has to be able to move. That's what I found works really well. And it looks like a wedge has fallen out from right there. And these are eight pound sledgehammers. I suppose you could go bigger. I think a one horsepower, the biggest you can do with this gear ratio is about eight pounds. So then I've done a few custom things that you don't have to do. This table, I like it if I have a piece of material to readjust the grip on my tongs and set it on there, it'll burn, I don't really care. And of course I have a little die system that these go on the outside and you can clamp little dies like these. Just a little 5 eighths fullering die that sits there but on like the bottom and top die and that little thing clamps to it. So that works really well if you need a little die system to draw stuff out faster. 
And then everything else is really common sense. Get the plans from Christ Centered Ironworks. They're not really that expensive. I forget the exact cost. Build the frame. Then the treadle, his design works well. And then build the frame and then watch this video for basically everything else. Use some common sense. And you know, this I'm pretty sure is roughly in the middle of this bar. So this right here is exactly in the middle of this one, which this is two feet long. It's at 12 inches. So that's great. And then as far as the motor mounting goes, your treadle might be a tad bit different on height. So just mount your motor to exactly the right height you need it. And for weights, I just put some cinder blocks on it since I can't mount this to our garage floor. Sadly, whenever I get a shop, I'll probably mount it if I even have this that long. But yeah, I'm pretty sure these are usually like a two by six, but I had all these big boards that I got for free. So, hey, I, I'm gonna do it for free if I can. And then these are just two by sixes run along the bottom, screwed into it to keep it stable. And that's pretty much it. It's, there's not a whole lot to it. And this power hammer, um, I've put two inch stock under it, but it really doesn't do well with two inch. It's mainly for knives. When you don't want to spend as much time hand hammering, it takes actually the same amount of time to hand hammer. But if you live in Arizona, like I do, and right now I'm sweating because it's 115 degrees out and I'm inside not doing anything, just talking to a camera. And with swinging a six pound hammer, it gets about the same amount of material moved as using this power hammer. So it's about the same but I would recommend using this if you live in really hot weather or you just don't want to be completely shattered and worn out because it's not very fun to be that worn out and this will help with that. This power hammer works really well. I've been using it for a little while, you know, really testing it before I made this video, so that's why it's taken quite a while. It, I've had this power hammer for quite some time now and I've been tweaking it, playing with it, to make sure that this is right before I give you the design and then you're just gonna go out and have something break. So this is what I found works really well. So Christ Centered Ironworks um, for the frame of it and then all the moving parts, come watch this video. And you should have yourself a power hammer that didn't take a year to build. <laughs> yep, so it took us a long time to build this just because of the fact that we didn't know anything we were doing and I perfected the design for this power hammer. I guess that'll be it. So thank you so much for watching. I highly recommend you build this if you have the tools and you have the skills. It's a great little power hammer to have around just to draw stuff out. Thank you so much for watching. Drop a comment below, like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Okay, whoa. Uh, I realized it didn't cover something, and that was that some people were concerned about the effectiveness of it. And I talked about it just a tad bit, but it's equivalent to swinging a six pound hammer. And believe me, I can swing a six pound hammer, I swing 16 pound sledgehammer. This is one handed six pound hammer, 16 pounds obviously, two handed, but I can swing a hammer, and I can swing a six pound all day long, not get tired. It's just, when it's 115 degrees out, it's not as fun to swing a six pound hammer. So it is effective. It works equally to a six pound hammer that swung slower versus an eight pound swung very rapidly. So some people were concerned about the effectiveness of it. It is effective and it works really well. Now, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.